and welcome to the first of what I hope will be many videos here on finishyoursong.com. In this and the next video, I want to look at setting up a default template for your DAW, and I'll be using Cubase as an example, as that's what I'm using. I'm going to start by thinking about colour and how we use it. When computers finally migrated away from monochrome to 16 colours, there was a rash of programmes written taking full advantage of this, and those base 16 colours pretty much survive today as the standard colours in Windows. Unfortunately, they were fairly bright, and this led to some garish colour schemes, particularly once Microsoft released Visual Basic and everyone programming a new application took full advantage of this, regardless of how migraine-inducing the end result was. That's really my point when it comes to using colour in your DAW. You're going to be looking at the screen for a prolonged period of time and strong bright colours can be as tiring on your eyes as overloud monitoring can be on your ears. However, colour can be a great help in keeping track of what you're looking at, providing you use a consistent colour scheme that makes sense to you. And that's something I'd like you to keep in mind through the rest of this video. What I'm going to show you makes sense to me, but you don't have to agree. Hopefully, this video will help you to work out what works for you and how to get there. When I started using Cubase, which is longer ago than I should really admit, colour wasn't an option. Cubase 2.0 ran on the Atari ST, and if you wanted good definition on your screen, you had to use an Atari monochrome monitor. Keeping track of what was going on wasn't really an issue, as you'd have one track for each MIDI channel you were using. In my case, one for my Juno synth, one for my TX7, six for the multi-timbral sound module we were using, and one for the drum machine. So a maximum of nine MIDI tracks in all, plus up to seven additional tracks for the audio on the Fostex reel-to-reel -reel that we had synced up, giving us a massive 16 tracks. Jump forward 20 years, and you can have 16 tracks just for the drums, whether recorded audio or split out from a virtual instrument like Easy Drummer or Contact. I've had projects to mix with over 60 tracks, and this can get seriously confusing. In the next video, I'm going to look at how you can manage such a large number of tracks, but the first step in that process is clearly labelling each track, and colour is tremendously helpful for that. This is a blank project in Cubase 6.5, but these comments apply equally to Cubase 4, 5 or 6. I understand that colour is something a little different in Cubase 7, and when I upgrade, I'll do some videos covering the differences and I'll look again at colour if I need to. This project has loaded with the default colour scheme using 16 reasonably muted colours. Now, you might like these, but I find the greens and the purples aren't really distinct enough for me and there isn't enough variety. But we can edit these and save our own colour combinations by clicking on the Select Colours at the bottom of the list. This opens the Project Colours screen, and for each colour in the project, you can change both the colour and the label. So if we click on colour 5, it opens up here. We can apply one of the standard colours by clicking the Apply button, or we can modify the colour by using the colour wheel, just clicking and dragging on this crosshair. We can adjust the intensity of that colour by clicking on the slider, or you can directly input into these boxes either the RGB values or the hue, saturation and luminescence values. You can do that either by just double clicking on the number and typing a number in. You can click and drag on the number up and down. Or you can click individually to incrementally advance the numbers using these little arrows. Once you're happy, you apply it and you can click into that box to type in what that colour means to you. So if you're a mandolin player, happy days. We click OK and now when we go to our colour selector at the top of the screen we can see that that is labelled mandolin. At the bottom of the screen we've got these buttons that enable you to add extra colours or remove colours that already exist. So if you want to get rid of colour 13, for example, you just click that and there it is, gone. This button enables you to increase or decrease the intensity of the colours. 
And likewise, this one allows you to alter the brightness either up or down until you're happy with what you've got. Once you are happy, you can save the current set as your program default. Or if you've made a complete hash of it, you can reset to the factory setting like that. You can also load in your own defaults that you've already saved. And here's what I made earlier. So that's my color set that I use in my projects. And I'll OK that. And now that's been applied. So I've got a color scheme that I can load into any project and I'll have a consistent appearance to my tracks. Or will I? By default, when you import tracks into your project, Cubase cycles through your color set, which leaves you with a rainbow effect on your desktop. A very pretty picture in your project window, but one that you're going to ruin as soon as you start sorting your tracks into any sort of order. You can address this in your preferences. So you go File, Preferences, and it's here in Project and Mixer. The default is use previous track color plus one in your auto track color mode. I'm going to set that to use previous track color. There are two other areas where you can apply color in Cubase. One is the meters. This is the default green to blue that comes with Cubase. What you can do is if you hold Alt and click, it will add you another pen. And you can adjust this by clicking and dragging so that you get an area, a different colored area in your meter. You want to get rid of it, hold Control and click, and you revert back to what you had before. You can have multiple pens. And of course, you click on them. You can alter the color. And you can end up with this rather fanciful rainbow effect. And get rid of that. The general appearance of the program is controlled from this section here. You can adjust the tone of this backing with the color tone slider and also how dark or light it is and also the intensity of the color. So if you want your mixer to look purple, there you go. As with all things in Cubase, holding control and clicking on a slider resets them back to their default position. The one thing I do like on this screen is to alter the fader cap color intensity. You slide that across and these faders go from a sort of grayish white to a series of colors. You can't alter these colors, they're fixed in Cubase. And doing this doesn't affect your stereo output channel or your input channels. What it affects is the actual audio channels that you would see normally in the project window. The sky blue one is for audio. The green is for instrument tracks. This blue is for group tracks. This is for your effects channels. And orange is for your MIDI channels. So you can OK that or apply it. And it tells us that the changes to general appearance will take effect when you restart Cubase. And that's good. So we'll OK that. So you can set up a custom color scheme in Cubase for your tracks and customize the appearance of the mixer within limits so that you can have a consistent appearance across all of your projects. In the next video, I'll look at saving a project template and why you would want to do that. Until then, take care of yourselves.